Well, these four things look very complicated, and so do the equations, but they're not really. If you multiply the hydrogen ion concentration by the hydroxide ion concentration, it always gives you 10 to the minus 14. Uh, molar squared, the IB don't worry too much about that, all the state symbols, and 298 Kelvin, well, we're going to change that in a later part. But that's freaky. 10 to the minus 14, how serendipitous, how lucky is that? A nice easy number. So that means if we log it, the pH and the pOH is 14. It's just lucky. pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, and the hydrogen ion concentration therefore is 10 to the minus pH. It looks horrible, but we'll give you one, you give us the other three. Let's look at an easy one. If the hydrogen ion concentration is a thousandth of a molar, I can push it through the equation and get pH 3. But this is a kind of an easy special SL case, a standard case. That 3 there becomes pH 3. This only really works for simple numbers like uh, a tenth, a hundredth, a thousandth, ten thousandth molar. Now I know that pH and pOH together equals 14. That's really lucky. Thank you, nature. So pOH must be 11. And by analogy, I know that H plus is 10 to the minus pH. So OH minus must be 10 to the minus pOH. So that gives me 10 to the minus 11 molar for my hydroxide ion concentration. Not much at all. Let's try one with a non-integer. If the pOH is 11.5, but I know that the hydroxide ion concentration is 10 to the minus 11.5 molar. You can't leave it like that. You used to be able to, but now you have to press XC or equal and get the actual number. They won't accept it otherwise. Now, pOH and pH must be 14, so that gives me a pH of 2.5. 3.2 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And let's just do a quick double check with the KW. H plus times OH minus is 10 to the minus 14. Let me pop those numbers in and check. That times that. Yeah, it works out. Equation confirmed.